Welcome to this introductory video on how to open Premiere Pro and understand something of the series of windows that it throws at you as soon as you start, which can be quite confusing. So I'm going to start Premiere Pro. This happens to be Premiere Pro CS5, but um, the same is true of Premiere Pro CS4 and CS3. You're going to be faced with the same series of windows, so you needn't worry about any of those. Now when it opens, there we go, we have immediately a splash screen. And this splash screen has got a, near, a number of options. I can go straight to the help files if I want. I can open a project by going and navigating to wherever that project might be on my system. I'm not going to do that at the moment. I can look at a recent project that I've opened. I've got a number here that I can just click on and that will open them straight away. But I'm going to open a new project to help you to understand the windows. This is the new project dialog box and it has two tabs, a general tab and a scratch disk tab. Simply put, if you are going to save a video from your camera and save video previews, you don't really want to have them on the same hard drive as your system hard drive if you can help it. If you need to work on one hard drive, that's fine. But if you have a separate hard drive, you want to save your captured video, your captured audio, your video previews and your audio previews on a separate disk. This will speed up your system because your system isn't looking on the system disk and trying to find how the program is operating and where the video is. Simply the program can operate on your system disk and you can simply pull it in from the D drive or whatever drive you've got. So I have navigated or browsed to my D drive and I've selected my D drive and I've gone down and found a, a file that's called PP. There it is there. And I clicked on that one that was the one that I'm using. So PP for all of these which is a separate disk drive and I can name the project down here if I want but I can do that in this window as well. This you needn't worry about. These are just simply um, what area to be careful with if you've got titles and you want them to be seen on older style televisions and what's the maximum area that you can have action in and not lose it on the edge of the screen. So just leave those as it is. You don't need to change those. Video format, really, these are how to view your video. Um, usually, most people who are working in video will stick with time code, which will give you hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Um, just a quick note, if you have PAL, if you're European and you've got phase alternating line, you will have 25 frames per second, so that's zero to 24, and then the next second will come. If you're in America, you will have NTSC, which is, stands for never the same color twice, um, or uh, National Television Standards Council, one of the two, which is uh, 30 frames, or in, in actual fact 29.97 frames a second. Audio, I wouldn't bother with changing this unless you are an expert on audio and you're going to be doing some detailed audio changes. Most people work on audio samples. And then the last one down here is Capture Format. Um, you've only really got two options, either it's DV or HDV, um, or you're going to be importing footage in through a memory card or what have you. Um, if you're going to be capturing straight from a camera, then if you know you've got an older camera, which is a DV camera, select DV. But if you've got a newer camera and it's HDV, then select HDV. Mine happens to be HDV. And then I've saved my project in the same folder as my captured video. And I'm going to name it, I'll call this one test, and it'll probably tell me that that already exists. Overwrite it, yes, overwrite it. Then, unfortunately, we get another splash screen. I'm going to put my video into a sequence and I need to make sure that that sequence matches my footage. So I have said I have got an HDV camera so therefore I need to be in this HDV tab. If you have any video capture cards by the way they will be down here so if you have a matrix card for instance you'll have a matrix settings and you can just open that and select from them. But here we have HDV now mine's HDV which means it's a 1080 I for interlaced and mine's PAL, so it's 25 frames per second. The 50i, incidentally, says you've got you've got 50 fields, which is two fields per frame because it's interlaced. If it's interlaced, you've got two fields per frame. Progressive only has one field per frame. So here we are. That's the PAL one. If you're American, you're going to want to choose the 30 or 60i because that's the NTSC setting. Well, mine happens to be that. But then what if you're DV? Well, you've got DV PAL. And you've got DV NTSC, you've even got DV 24p and that's for those who are filmmakers who are working on 24 frames per second. And when you open up each of those you've got, depends on what your camera is capable of doing. This is about the footage that comes out of your camera 
is it widescreen and what's the sound you should be able to get this from your camera's handbook so you select whatever matches your camera so mine's HDV and this is sequence one I'm going to leave it called sequence one click OK and Premiere Pro is going to open properly for me to actually start to import footage now I can either capture footage from my camera directly or I can import footage now to import footage you can either go file import and that opens up your import folder you can do control or command I which will do exactly the same thing but the easiest way double click in this space here opens it up and you can bring in whatever bits of footage you want to use so if I bring in this bit of footage I can double click on that open it up have a look at it that happens to be a uh, a water vole set an in point set an out point and then drag it down to my timeline and I can zoom into my timeline and see my footage there and that's how you get started with Premiere Pro. Mm -hmm.